Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Covenant of Grace Ministries YouTube streaming channel. I am Steve Williams, Jr., and I serve as pastor of this Kingdom Content Ministry. Uh, we thank you for joining us today, and we want to extend the love, the grace, and the peace of Jesus Christ to each of you. Um, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that uh, today's Holy Spirit-inspired message will enlighten, encourage, and empower you uh, today. Um, we are continuing our teaching series that's titled Trusting in God's Process. So far, we've completed uh, the introductory message, and on last week, we taught um part two which was titled tested to be trusted tested to be trusted and we're going to provide a brief summary of last week's message uh but i encourage you uh to watch last week's message in its entirety if you haven't church because it will provide better clarity on what what god's process is all about so let's uh Let's go over to our summary slide for last week. Um, we said, as we talked about, we began teaching about tested to be trusted. We said, as we go through this spiritual transformation process, there will be a series of tests that we will experience to help us understand if we are ready to be trusted with greater levels of responsibility from God. Now, when we think of that word test, test, uh, if we define that word test, it means that it is a procedure intended to establish the quality, performance of or, or reliability of something, especially before it is taken into widespread use. And our title scripture last week was uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10, which says, I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. And we learned from this scripture last week that God's tests expose what's hidden in our hearts. And, and sometimes what's in our hearts are not so obvious. And that's why it takes for God to, to, to put a test on us to uh, to allow things that are hidden inside of us to become visible. So in addition to that, we also learn from Deuteron Deuteronomy 8 and 2, where it speaks about the children of Israel's wilderness experience that tests locate a person uh, to reveal the, the true condition of their heart. So tests locate a person to reveal their true condition of their hearts. So how we respond or react under pressure reveals the real us. Amen. So, and then we finished out last week by covering the five tests that we experience as disciples of Jesus Christ. First test we talked about was the obedience test. And this tests our ability to be obedient to God's word in adverse, uh, adverse conditions. And we, uh, Providing an example of this, and this was with Abraham, when God tested Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. And we know that Isaac was God's promise fulfilled for Abraham. And, and sometimes we learn that sometimes God will test us on the promise he fulfills for us because he wants us to see if we value his promise more than we value him. The second test that we talked about was the pressure test. And this test, our ability to be patient and trust God's timing and plan for us. Pressure tests ultimately reveal who we are serving, okay? That pressure tests reveal who, are we, who we are serving. Uh, either we're serving God or whether we're serving God's promise for us, okay? The, and then the more that we try to rush the process, the more we prolong it. And we have to keep in perspective that any outward pressure is an opportunity for us to bring forth an inward transma transformation in our lives. 
any outward pressure that we experience is an opportunity to bring forth an inward transformation in our lives. The next test that we talked about was the stewardship test. And this tests our ability to manage the tools and the resources that God has made available to us. Example that we had, we, we it was around uh, Jesus' brothers, earthly brothers, pressuring him to publicize his ministry to a larger audience. And Jesus knew that this was not God's timing for him. And, and as we think about ourselves as we, uh, and God's promises for us, this may mean that we may have to help others achieve their promises before we're able to focus on our own promise that he's given to us, you know, and helping others achieve their promises actually links directly to our promise because that experience that we have prepares and develops us for what's ahead when it comes to our promise. And this enables us to be content during the process. And we talked about one of the key things around about contentment is that having a heart of gratitude postures us to not only properly steward our current responsibilities, but it also positions us for our future promotion. And God will, when we receive that promotion, God will give us more to manage, more responsibilities to manage. Uh, the next test that we talked about was the character test. This tests our ability to operate with integrity when we experience some success. And now the character test reveals any mixed motives or hidden agendas. That character test exposes and it spotlights impurities in our hearts. So how we handle success at one level of promotion determines whether, whether we are ready for that next or greater promotion that's on the other side of that test. And we use the example of Joseph in showing how he functioned with integrity and character as he was given opportunities to lead and manage. Um, and, and one thing that we pointed out was that we should not be in such a hurry for promotion without being led by the Holy Spirit. We have to allow God to develop and test our character. So when it is time for our promotion, we can handle it and prevent God from having to take it away from us. Amen. All right. The next test that we're going to talk about is the suffering. This was our last test that we studied about the suffering test. This tests our ability to remain faithful in the midst of trials and tribulations. Our suffering is a test of our faith in the Godhead and his word. And sometimes we talked about sometimes God rescues us from things. Sometimes he rescues us out of things. And sometimes he changes us in things. But the key part about it is we must trust God's choice because he knows what is best for us. We said that suffering test produce the fruit of patience. That fruit of patience upholds our faith. It's that door stopper. And if we remain faithful to God and remain faithful in his word in the midst of our suffering, his promise and his promotion will be waiting for us on the other side. Amen. All right. So that was that was the were the key points from last week's message on tested to be trusted. We're going to begin on our message for today. Today's message is titled, Progress Through the Pro Process. Progress Through the Process. And our title of scripture is found in Hebrews 6, verse 12. And then we're going to jump to chapter 10, Hebrews 10, verse 36. Progress Through the Process. All right. Progress is made by continuing through God's process. Now, over the past two weeks, the Holy Spirit has given me this key point regarding God's process. And I want to repeat this key point as a reminder for us. 
And that key point that he, he shared that we've been going over these last two weeks is this. The process prepares us for what God has prepared for us. I'm going to say that again. The process prepares us for what God has prepared for us. Now, we must operate with this mindset so that we can patiently stay the course and progress through the process. In our title scriptures, they speak to this. So let's start out by reading Hebrews chapter 6. We're going to read verses 10 through 12, and then we're going to jump, jump to chapter 10 and read verse 36. Scripture says, and now I want each of you to extend that same intensity toward a full bodied hope and keep it till the finish. Don't drag your feet. Be like those who stay the course with committed faith and then get everything promised to them. You need to stick it out, staying with God's plan so you'll be there for the promised completion. Amen. I hope as we read through the title scriptures that we had here, I hope we recognize the two identical statements that are emphasized re regarding receiving what God has promised. Th th that phrase, staying, staying the course and staying with God's plan. Stay the course and staying with God's plan. The key word that we see in both these phrases is stay. Here's the thing. Many disciples of Jesus Christ miss what God has for them because they choose not to stick around to receive it, church. They either become discouraged or impatient, and as a result, they abort the process. Now, a synonym for the word stay is wait. And the word wait means to stay where one is or delay action until a particular time. OK, this means not trying to make things happen on our own timetable and plan, but it means listening to God for his guidance and his grace so that we are totally aligned with his plan for our lives. Amen. Many times, our lack of communication with God, we're not praying to God and not allowing God. We're speaking to God, but we're not allowing God to, to, to speak to us. Amen? Um, um, and so this lack of communication can result in us doing things on our own, okay, and not have alignment with him. Now, from personal experience, when I no longer strive to make God's promise come to pass in my life, that's when God is able to really move in my life and transform me into the kingdom man that he, he wants me to be, okay? Amen. Now, God's process takes some time. It takes some time. Progressing through God's process requires faith and it requires patience. We touched on this last week, but let's look at, at, an, at an example of this in Romans 8, verses 22 through 25 through the message translation. All around us, we observe a pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pains. It's not only around us, it's within us. The spirit of God is arousing us within. We're also feeling the birth pains. They step there. These sterile and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. That is why waiting does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. We are enlarged in the waiting. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us, but the longer we wait, the larger we become and the more, the more joyful of our expectancy. Praise God. What a, what a, 
What a passage there. And, and Paul uses the analogy of a pregnant woman in this passage to illustrate how, how faith and patience work together. Now, when a woman becomes pregnant, there is a period of waiting. She knows the promise of a child is going to be on the other side, but there's a period of waiting. It doesn't happen immediately. You know, from the moment of conception to the moment of delivery, the woman is known to be expecting, right? Now, as the baby forms and develops within her, she knows that a date is set to give birth to the baby that she's carrying. Now, we can't rush the development of the child in the womb. And in the same fashion with the spiritual transformation process, we cannot rush God's work in our lives. You see, God determines the schedule. Even though we may get a date, an expected date of the baby arriving, God determines the schedule. Now, rushing God's process is like delivering a baby prematurely. We know what happens when a, when a child, when a baby is born premature. Um, they're weak, right? Their, their organs are not fully developed and they are at high risk to not survive these conditions, okay, outside the womb. Now, in a similar manner, when we are pregnant with a promise from God, we are expecting one day to receive that promise, right? But if we receive the promise prematurely, it puts us at risk, just like the, the premature baby is put at risk. It puts us at risk to not be able to handle God's promise because our character has not been developed to handle it. Now, how big, how big God's promise is can impact the length of his promise process for us. I'm going to say that again. How big God's promise is can impact the length of his process for us. Typically, okay, thinking about it in the natural, typically for a human female, the pregnancy term is around nine months. And at time of birth, a baby weighs between six to eight pounds on average. Now, let's compare that with an elephant. A female elephant's pregnancy terms is around 18 to 24 months. OK, that's over double the time of a human female. OK, now an infant elephant weighs around 200 to 255 pounds at birth. Do we see the difference here? Amen. If we are spiritually pregnant with a big promise from God. We should expect to wait longer before it comes to pass. Amen. He's got to develop us and cultivate us to the people that he needs us to be in order to re receive that large promise. Amen. And he wants us to have the character and integrity to keep it. Amen. Now, as we wait on that promise to be fulfilled, we are growing. We are developing in preparation for it. Just as a pregnant woman educates herself on what to expect while she's expecting, likewise, in order for us to progress through God's process, it is important, very important for us to be aware of what to expect while we are expecting the fulfillment of God's promise. And these expectations are what we are going to cover in today's message. All right. Let's uh, talk about our first expectation in God's process. All right. To expect to encounter discouragement. To expect to encounter encouragement. As we stay the course we will encounter times of discouragement. This often 
happens. It, it often occurs when what we we're expecting doesn't happen uh, how or when we expect it to. And Solomon illustrates this in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Scripture says, hope defers makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. You see, delay can be depressing and it can feel like denial. But delay is not denial. I'm going to say that again. Delay is not denial. We need to receive that message, church, into our spirits because we so often get the two confused. And I've been there. I've seen opportunities pass me by and thought it was a denial, but it was actually a delay for something better down the road. You know, I, I, I've in, in, in my younger years, I, I've had this five-year plan, this 10-year plan regarding my career, my family, my financial goals, my uh, my minist the, the ministry that God has placed on me. And here's what I've learned over time. And I want to share this with those who are watching and listening. It is not bad for us to plan and set goals and visions for our lives. But what we must always remember is that we should invite God into those discussions. Amen. And we need to allow him to have input, to provide input and give us direction in our planning. Amen. We need to let go of the preconceived expectation and let God bring his promise to pass in his time and not our time. So when he does, and when we allow, when we re release our perceived expectation and we allow God to bring his promise to pass in his time, this is when the sweetness of his promise, that's when that sweetness of his promise, that's when it satisfies our souls. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's go to the next expectation. Our next expectation is to contend for the promise. To contend for the promise. To combat discouragement, we must keep ourselves encouraged. How does the song go? Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. But no matter how you feel, speak the word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Praise God. This encouragement, church, this encouragement of ourselves requires us to be intentional about keeping the promises before us. When we do this, it provides a sense of purpose to the present process. Now, the Bible is a book of encouragement, and the Bible provides us some helpful tools to apply in our lives. Let's look at an example of this. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3 says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. When God gives us a vision, when he gives us a promise, we need to write it down. We need to speak it audibly on a consistent basis, especially during times where we're discouraged, church. We need to post that word of encouragement, that promise, that vision on our mirrors. Uh, in our mirrors, on our mirrors, in our in our bathroom, our bedroom. 
We need to keep it in our office, in our car. We need to make it a screensaver on our phone so that we do not lose sight of it, church. Because sometimes our, 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 during the process, we can lose sight. We're so caught up in, 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 in the length of the process or the discouragement or the, the difficult things that come, the, uh, the, the, the trials and the tribulations in the process that we lose sight of the vision. Amen. We have to make it visible to us so that we don't lose sight of it. Here's another example of how we can encourage ourselves by praying God's promise to ourselves, praying it to him and praying it to ourselves. And Paul gives us an example of this illustration, 1 Timothy 1 and 18. It says, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Church, both reviewing and praying God's promises for our lives will help us to stay the course to completion. Amen. We must remember that the promise is in the fulfillment of the process. The promise is in the process of fulfillment. Amen. The promise is in the process of fulfillment. All right, let's go to the third expectation. To expect God to surprise us. To expect God to, su to surprise us. Through God's process, he can sometimes seem distant. Or, or, or there will be times where we, might, we may not feel God's intimate presence in our lives. And in these moments, we are, are tempted to entertain thoughts and feelings of abandonment. You know, we, we may cry out, Lord, why did you leave me out here in this wilderness, you know, by myself? Why, Lord, why aren't you removing, why aren't you removing me out of this situation that I'm in right now? You know, we may cry out, God, where are you? Where are you, God? You see me dealing with the pressures and the temptations and, and, and the tri trials and tribulations. Where are you? Here's one thing that we need to remember. Just because we cannot see God working on our behalf doesn't mean he's not. Amen? Just because we cannot see God working on our behalf doesn't mean he's not. In fact, this is a time when God is most active. He's working things in the supernatural to make them manifest in the natural. Amen. The words of the psalmist indicate this in Psalm 37 and 4. Scripture says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of of your heart, delight yourself in the Lord. That word delight in Hebrew is chafis, chafis, which means to be soft, to be moldable or pliable. You know, most of us would think light, delight is tied to being joyful. Now, delight is linked to joy, but as a result of us being pliable people, that's how delight comes, that's how joy comes about in our lives. So as, as we, if we looked at this from a spiritual perspective, the light means to be teachable, to be teachable men and women that God has called us to be. And now when we allow ourselves to be teachable, to allow God to shape us into the people that he's called us to be, what he does is he prepares us for the desires of our heart. Henceforth, that's where the joy comes in. You see that? God takes his time to do everything right. Somebody may get an SOS band moment out of that. God takes his time to do everything right. Time is on our side because God is on our side. I'm going to say that again. Time is on our side because God is on our side. 
And here's the next part to this expectation. Waiting on God through the process enables us to develop and maintain our dependency on him. Let's be real. There are many occasions where success can cause us to lose sight of our need for God. Is someone here listening to me right now? Has someone fallen into that trap? I know I have. Success has a way of weaning us off our dependency on God. That's why, church, we must remain childlike, just like an infant is de dependent on the sincere milk of the month of the of the of their mother. We must remain childlike and maintain our God orientation and not shift to a self orientation, which we take responsibility for maintaining success rather than depending on God. We fall trapped to that a lot, church. You see, and that's why God wants to work on us, to ground us, to strengthen us, to stretch and mature our faith so that we can build our trust in him. You know, when we enter, when we enter times of promotion, we'll know, we'll know. Having that maintaining that God orientation, we'll know without a shadow of a doubt that it was God who brought us there, who, who got us to that point of promotion. Amen. When we keep our hearts anchored in the Lord, we should expect God to surprise us with his grace to fulfill our promise. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 11, he says, says, he has made everything beautiful in his name. Also, he has put eternity in, our, in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to now cover our fourth and final expectation. That is to expect our capacity to be enlarged, to expect our capacity to be enlarged. As we progress through God's process, know that our capacity will be incrementally enlarged. Now, I want to share an example to provide an illustration of what the Holy Spirit just had me say to you all. Recently, I started back exercising on a regular basis, and I think it began probably at the very end of 2022, and it's gone into 2023. And this exercise regimen that, I, that, that I've been doing incorporates lifting weights and doing cardio exercises in a, in a 20 minute session. Now, when I first started back exercising, I wasn't able to handle heavy loads. You know, my strength was not developed at that time. Now, over the course of about three months of being consistent with my workout regimen, I had to change my pattern in order to have some a new pattern of, consi of a consistent regimen. As I, as I continued on that course of changing my patterns and being consistent, I noticed, I quickly noticed that my strength progressively developed. I was able to handle heavier loads of weight than I, than I was able to do at day one. Amen. Now, Pastor, Pastor where, where are you going with this? In a similar manner, God develops our capacity to handle greater challenges. Therefore, staying the course is crucial to our development. And Paul illustrates this in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. We're going to start off by just reading verse, verses 3 and 4, okay? And not only this, but with joy, let us exult in our sufferings and rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, trouble produces patient endurance, and endurance, proven character, spiritual maturity, and proven character, hope, and confident assurance of eternal salvation. Now, I need to, need to make this, provide some clarity here. 
Rejoicing in affliction doesn't mean we're asking for affliction to come our way. That's not what that means. But it's a rejoicing in affliction means it's a it's a, all about recognizing that there is greater purpose in our affliction. Okay. Now, here's something that we need to understand as we talk about this and, and we read Romans 5, 3, and 4, what capacity is being enlarged in us? First thing that we see in, 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 in verse 4 is this, patience. Patience, the ability to hold up our faith in God and his word. We talked about this last week. Patience is the door stopper to keep the faith door open in our lives. That's one Patience is a fruit of the spirit. That capacity of patience grows as we endure affliction. What's the next thing that we, we build capacity in? Integrity. Integrity is consistently reflecting the character of Jesus Christ in our lives. And, and, and when we do, and, and even in times when we do make mistakes, integrity is all about holding ourselves accountable repenting and restoring our correct fellowship with God, the father, Jesus, the son, and the Holy spirit. All right. The third way that we build our capacity is in, in our hope and our confidence, assurance of eternal salvation. This is around this hope is, is in God. It, it is in that God's promises will be fulfilled either in time or eternity. And, and here's the thing about God's, God's hope. His hope never disappoints us as it states in verse five. And I'm going I'm to uh, read verse five for us. Such hope in God's promises never disappoints us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The Holy Spirit Jesus' greatest gift to the church is the one who supplies us abundantly with the love of God in our hearts, church. That's why it's so important that the Holy Spirit is leading us and guiding us on this journey through God's process. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the person of the Godhead who reminds us that there is a purpose in the process. I'm going to say that again. The Holy Spirit is the person of the Godhead who reminds us that there is a purpose in the process. Hallelujah. We are going to stop here for today and pick up next week on the final message of the trusting in God's teaching God's process teaching series. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a message for today. I hope that uh, today's message has, has blessed your entire being and spirit, soul, and body. I hope today's message gives us a better, a better and clearer understanding of what to expect during God's process of transformation. Remember those four expectations to expect to encounter this, to, to encounter discouragement. Second one, to contend for the promise. The third one, uh, we need to expect God to surprise us. And, and, and the fourth one is to expect our capacity to be enlarged. Amen. All right. Before we close with our prayer and benediction, just want to share a few ways that you can support Covenant of Grace Ministries. First of all, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, I encourage you to do so. In addition to subscribing, click that notifications icon, the bell to give you notifications whenever we post content on our YouTube channel. Amen. Second thing that you can do if this message has blessed you, 
please, please, by all means, share this message with someone in your circle so that they can be blessed as well. Let's not only be blessed by God's word, but let's be a blessing to others so that they can be blessed by God's word as well. Amen. All right. Thirdly, we appreciate your support through your prayers of encouragement and words of encouragement for Pastor Spradley and I as we continue to be led by the Holy Spirit to share these messages with you. Amen. And finally, if you want to plant a financial seed, we have the information there um, to give you if you want to do so. We are truly grateful, truly grateful, church, everyone that's watching for all of your support. We thank you for that. And we want to continue as leaders of this kingdom ministry. We want to continue to be led by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit and provide you with rich, rich and practical kingdom content so that you all can become better disciples of Jesus Christ. And we can as well. We can all grow together and be beacons of light for the world to see in order to draw them to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Don't forget. Last thing, don't forget. Join us Thursday as Pastor Spradley will be sharing his prophetic soundbite. Don't miss that opportunity to get another rich dose of God's word to encourage you to uplift your souls. Amen. All right. We're going to bow our heads for our prayer and benediction. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your presence, your, your power and your wisdom today. Father, we thank you for giving us a word about progressing through the process. We thank you, Lord, that you take the time to do everything right. We choose to depend on you just like a child depends on his mother. Our trust is in you. And we thank you that you make everything beautiful in its ordained time. And now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. May the love of God, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us until we come together again in Christian fellowship. And all of God's people responded with a prayer of agreement by saying, Amen. Love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time.